Welcome to worship, to those of you who are gathered here in our sanctuary, and those of you who are um, online. A couple of announcements that I'd like to uh, draw to your attention. Some of them are on the announcement sheet, and uh, those are the ones I'm going to highlight first. Um, you will notice that uh, there was a, in the narthex a table set up to do bookings for our new church directory. And uh, so we're planning to put out a new church directory in the early new year, which means we need to take pictures during uh, December. And there's a few different dates. And uh, the process is one you, that, that's online, but we've got people in the narthex to help with that process. And if you have any questions, you can call either Dan or Anna, and their phone number is listed there. And uh, the other thing I want to make note about here is even if you're not officially a member, if you worship with us, we're happy to have your picture in the photo directory. So just uh, keep that in mind as well. This coming Saturday uh, will be our first choir rehearsal in over two and a half years. And uh, looking forward to that. So that'll be at 10.30 in the morning we start. And uh, if you're interested in singing with the choir, then please come out. And, uh, and join us uh, Saturday mornings at 10.30. And finally, uh, we'll be having a new member Sunday, the last Sunday of November. And uh, I'm still uh, checking to see if there's anybody who uh, has not yet indicated to me that they would like to be part of that um, and would need to take the new members classes. So this is sort of a last uh, attempt at announcing that. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a member and uh, come from a different church, um, please contact the office or myself uh, early this week. Uh, and then an announcement that isn't in the bulletin, and that is uh, there is a box in the narthex that uh, the uh, uh, Justice Ministry team from uh, Christ Lutheran has put there. Uh, this is to uh, provide uh, or to make donations of mitts, gloves, toques, scarves, and newer or slightly used uh, items like this. Um, this is, uh, will be distributed at the Trinity uh, Pantry, the Trinity Lutheran Pantry, where we have been distributing sandwiches uh, uh, once a week on Thursdays. And uh, they noticed that a lot of people could use some winter uh, gear. So if you have any mitts, gloves, toques, scarves uh, that are fair in fairly good condition, please uh, consider donating them uh, in that box in the narthex. Okay, those are my announcements, Pastor Lynn. So the first thing I wanted to mention, uh, and I've mentioned this a couple Sundays, so Prairie Spirit, our country gospel band here at Christ Lutheran, had their final concert October 30th. They still have many CDs that they are giving away. Um, so uh, there is free CDs uh, in the narthex. Um, there is uh, about 200 left of My Best Friend, and there's about 60 left of that, That's Jesus. So don't be shy. Uh, great stocking stuffers, right? So just, just know that they're there for you to take home and to share with family and friends. So a couple other things coming up. Uh, our youth group will be meeting this Friday at 7 o'clock, board games and bingo. So CLIP stands for Christ Lutheran Young People. And the Women's Breakfast is coming up Saturday, November 26th, and tickets will be uh, on sale in the Narthex after the service, and Joy Lynn is taking care of that. And um, November birthdays, Audrey Wingert uh, celebrated a birthday on November 9th. So if you know her, please give her a call and wish her a belated happy birthday. And those are all my announcements today. A couple of weeks ago, I had these pictures um, uh, that I intended to show you about the youth group making sandwiches for the Trinity Pantry program, and then I just, I just got rushing ahead. And so uh, that's what you see on the screen. I think, is there one more picture there, Marie? Yeah, there's one more. So they, uh, they made sandwiches up in the ki church kitchen, and then uh, they were donated. It was a uh, carry 100 sandwiches? 112 sandwiches they made. And they seem to enjoy that. Yeah, good for the, good for the youth. Now I'm going to uh, call on our council chairperson, Kathy Tiefenbach, who uh, is going to give a temple talk.
morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to take a few minutes this morning to provide you an update on our church finances. It's not unusual for us to carry a deficit, and, and we have mentioned that in the last broadcaster, and you may have seen it printed in the bulletins. It's not that unusual. And what normally happens is the offerings that come in in November and December um, even that out, and so we will end up with like a small deficit or even, maybe even a modest surplus. However, um, after a lot of discussion around the council table, we thought it's important to let you know that this year's deficit is quite a bit bigger than what we have normally seen. Um, but before any of you panic, I want to just walk you through the big picture of our finances. So we are going to do the good, the bad, and the unknown. The good is actually very good. We are financially, we're a very sound church. We have a bank balance of $83,000, and we have GIC investments of $396,000. And if there's anything that can be an upside to our uh, financial turmoil that everyone's facing is we're getting better interest rates on our GIC, so we're happy to take that. So we have a cash, cash assets of about $480,000. So we are nowhere near teetering near bankruptcy or um, anything like that. We are not broke by any means. And one could argue that by comparison, the deficit is rather small. However, for the purpose of, of investments uh, is to be prepared for uh, large, unexpected costs and to keep us financially strong in the long term. As our congregation gets smaller, and we've all noticed that, especially if you've been around for 20 or 30 years, our congregation is getting smaller. And with that, our offerings are decreasing. And with all that being true, to have solid investments makes it more important so that we can continue for a long, for a long time and be a strong, healthy church. So for those reasons, we like to keep the investments separate from the daily operating expenses. The bad news is that compared to a year ago, our offerings are down by 7.6%, and the spending has increased, depending on the month, we can be anywhere from 1% to 5% up. We know that this isn't unique to us. We know that high inflation has made it difficult for many Canadians, especially those with low or fixed incomes, and this might mean having less to give to the church, and yet at the same time, the church is facing increasing costs as well. The purpose of my message today is not to make anyone feel guilty or pressured. In fact, I've just explained we are nowhere near bankruptcy and we're doing okay. However, it is our responsibility as council to make sure that we communicate our financial picture. And to that end, you may have noticed we've made a couple changes. Uh, the first, and we've done this for a while, is that in the broadcaster we will always have um, an update for that quarter and how we're doing and, and maybe a bit of commentary. The second is that once a month we will record in the bulletin um, two things, how the attendance is going, and that will include in person and online because both parts are very, very important, and we're grateful for both. And along with that, the total offerings for the previous month. The unknown is what our finance standing committee and council faces every year. Each year, we review the expenses, we analyze uh, where we have seen increases, and discuss how we might increase efficiency efficiencies. The difficulty, and I expect this could be said for many of you here this morning, is you're not sure what the next year is going to bring. Um, some, some of us live on pretty good solid pensions and others have pensions that go up and down. So, so again, it's not unusual. But it does make budgeting a challenge and so we're no different than you on that. We have held our budget to the same amount for the last three years and this year we'll take a look at that again and either hold or drop a bit depending on, on the wisdom we have around the table. So let me end with what we do know for sure. We know that God is with us. We know that he is faithful. And our church is steadily, with caution, returning to programs and opportunities where we can learn together, enjoy each other, and support each other through life's highs and lows that we all reach. We are looking for new and creative ways to do that. 
The church is so much more than just Sunday mornings, and it's definitely worth more than dollars and cents. Every time you show up here or online, every time you call a friend, lend a ham, make a sandwich, every time you do that, you are contributing to the church and making us more of what God has called us to be. So we're very, very grateful for all of you. We just wanted to let you know where we are. Thank you. Let's take a few moments of quiet reflection as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I'll invite you to stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Please join with me in the prayer of confession. We bow before you, O Lord, to acknowledge our failings. We ask forgiveness for words spoken in cruelty for behavior that tears down, for failing the ministries of your church, for preferring temporal wealth to riches in your spirit. Forgive us, we pray, and lead us into fullness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Surely God is our salvation. Place your trust in God and do not be afraid. For the Lord is our strength and our salvation. Our gathering hymn, We Praise You, O God, number 870. In grateful devotion our tribute we bring. We lay it before you, we kneel and adore you. We bless your holy name, glad praises we sing. We worship you, God of our fathers and mothers, through trial and tempest our guide you have been. When perils overtake us, you will not forsake us. And with your help, O oh Lord, our struggles we win. With voices united, our praises we offer in glad our songs of thanksgiving we raise with you Lord beside us your strong arm will guide us to you our great redeemer forever be praised
Lord be with you. Please join me in the prayer of the day. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the psalm. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 98. There is a sung refrain, and then we will speak the psalm responsively. We'll begin with the refrain. Sing to the Holy One, sing a new song. Sing to the Holy One, sing a new song, the one who has done marvelous things. Right hand and holy arm gave you victory. You announced the victory. And declared true justice to the nations. You remembered the covenant of love and fidelity toward the house of Israel. All the nations of the world have seen your victory, O God. Sing to the Holy One, sing a new song. Let the whole world shout to the Holy One. And break into joyful shouts and songs of praise. Sing to the Holy One on the harp. With the harp and lovely song. With trumpets and horn. Shout joyfully to our Sovereign, the Holy One. Sing to the Holy One and sing a new song. Let the sea roar and all its creatures, the whole world and all its peoples. Let the rivers clap their hands and the mountains shout together before the Holy One who is coming to judge the world. The Holy One will judge the world with true justice. And its peoples with integrity. Sing to the Holy One, sing a new song. We hear from scripture. Our first reading is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Children of God, we command you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to stay away from every person who lives an undisciplined life that is not in line with the traditions that you have received from us. You yourselves know how you need to imitate us because you were not undisciplined when we were with you. We didn't eat anyone's food without paying for it. Instead, we worked night and day with effort and hard work so that we would not impose on you. We did this to give you an example to imitate, not because we didn't have a right to insist on financial support. Even when we were with you, we were giving you this command. If anyone doesn't want to work, they shouldn't eat. We hear that some of you are living an undisciplined life. They aren't working, but they are meddling in other people's business. By the Lord Jesus Christ, we command and encourage such people to work quietly and put their own food on the table. Children of God, don't get discouraged in doing what is right. Here ends the reading. Inspire understanding, Spirit of God. Please stand as we sing the voice of creation. Voice of creation, open our ears to hear your word. Source of salvation, open our hearts to hold your love. Soul's inspiration, open our minds to know your grace. Three in relation. 
creation, transform our lives with your embrace. Voice of creation, open our ears to hear your word. Source of salvation, open our hearts to hold your love. Soul's inspiration, open our minds to know your grace. Three in relation, transform our lives with your embrace. The Holy Gospel, according to Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jim, I think we're going to switch to the pulpit mic. Because my wireless is cutting in out there. That's better, thank you. Some people were talking about the temple. How it was decorated with beautiful stones and ornaments dedicated to God. Jesus said, as for the things you are admiring, the time is coming when not even one stone will be left upon another. All will be demolished. They asked him, Teacher, when will these things happen? What sign will show that these things are about to happen? Jesus said, Watch out that you're not deceived. Many will come in my name saying, I'm the one. And it's time. Don't follow them. When you hear of wars and rebellions, don't be alarmed. These things must happen first, but the end won't happen immediately. Then Jesus said to them, nations and kingdoms will fight against each other. There will be great earthquakes and wide-scale food shortages and epidemics. There will also be terrifying sights and great signs in the sky. But before all this occurs, they will take you into custody and harass you because of your faith. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will provide you with an opportunity to testify. Make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. I'll give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to counter or contradict. You will be betrayed by your parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends. They will execute some of you. Everyone will hate you because of my name. Still, not a hair on your heads will be lost. By holding fast, you will gain your lives. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and the Sunday School children can head up for their Sunday School session. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we ask that you would speak through the words that I share, that as we reflect on the words that come to us through scripture, we may come to know the message for our lives on this day. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. So I've titled this uh, sermon, A New Song, A New Opportunity. And uh, we'll get to that, trust me. But first of all, I'm going to tell you about something amazing and frightening 
that happened on the night of November 12th and the early morning of November 13th, 1833. Can we go to the next slide? Just before dawn, people threw on clothes and gathered in roads and fields to watch the over 150,000 meteors, about 30 a second, dance in plain view during the storm's peak. <clears throat> One eyewitness told the newspaper in Illinois that the very heavens seemed to be ablaze. Though many were spellbound, not all rejoiced in the cosmic celebration. At the time, the South was a hotbed for the national religious revival known as the Second Great Awakening, and thus some were terrified, fearing that it was the end of days. How many of you knew about the night of the falling stars? This actually reoccurs every year, but not nearly as dramatically as in, 19, in 1833. Um, it's the Leonid uh, meteorite shower. So Earth is passing through the tail of a comet, essentially, and uh, those bits uh, of the comet tail that enter the atmosphere cause this amazing sight. I would have loved to have seen it. It would have been amazing. Would I have been frightened? Uh, that's a good question, because it does seem like something that extraordinary must mean something, doesn't it? Well, we're going to go back in time even further. After the destruction of the first temple in Jerusalem by the Babylonians, and that happened in 586 before Christ, the Jews of the kingdom of Judea went into exile. But in 538, during the reign of Cyrus the Great, the Persian ruler, the Jews returned to Jerusalem and were able to build the second temple on the site of the original one that had been destroyed. Many years later, Herod the Great rebuilt that temple, and he did that between 20 and 18 before Christ. This is the temple that the disciples are making comments about in our gospel reading. However, history also tells us that in 70 uh, AD, the Romans reclaimed Jerusalem and destroyed the second temple with only a portion of the western wall remaining. We can go to the next slide here. Thanks, Marie. And you will see uh, an artist's depiction of the Jewish revolt um, in, uh, in Jerusalem. Can we get the next picture here, Marie? Thank you. There we go. Today, all that remains of that second temple is the western wall or the wailing wall. It's just a foundation, but it remains a sacred site for Jews. So for the disciples to imagine that this beautiful big building would be totally destroyed, this building that signified that God was in their midst, that God was with them, to be destroyed was almost unthinkable. It must mean something, they're sure to have thought. And this is what happens whenever calamities strike humans or extraordinary things happen in nature. But Jesus tells his disciples that they need not fear these signs in the heavens or these circumstances with wars and rumors of wars and rebellions. I don't know if when you were listening to the a gospel reading, if you said, oh, listen to all those things, great earthquakes, wide-scale food shortages, and epidemics, and nations fighting against each other? Doesn't that sound like right now? Did you, did you think that? Yeah, exactly. 
This is what we do. We think this. And then we try and make sense of it, and that's when the problems come in, because we don't really ever have the big picture. So Jesus has to provide us with the big picture. And he says, don't worry about these things. God is still in control. That's the important message. God is still in control. And even though some of you are going to experience great harassment, even execution in some cases, this does not mean that God has forgotten you or that God has let everything go. Instead, Jesus says, this is an opportunity for you, a new opportunity. Because when they bring you before the, the trials, you can testify about your faith. You can share what it is that gives you hope even in the face of that which they seek to inflict upon you, which is fear. So rather than being afraid and playing their game, you can show them that you're not afraid because you're filled with hope. And the reason why you're filled with hope is because you know me. That's our reason for hope. Not because we can figure out all this stuff that's going on in the world, because heaven knows we can't figure it out. But we know Jesus. And he's the one who gives us this new opportunity. The thing I thought was uh, amazing about this passage was that Jesus tells his disciples not to prepare a defense in advance, to wing it, to improvise, to be like jazz musicians. Because <laughs> he says, I'll give you the words you need to know. And what Jesus is saying, don't rely on your own strength. Don't rely on your own wisdom. Don't think that I'm going to come up with the best argument possible and they will not be able to refute this. What I can tell you is that the, the study of apologetics is, is the defense of Christian faith using intellectual uh, rational argumentation. It's not successful. It very seldom really changes minds. So what matters is not you know, the intellectual understanding. What matters is how we live our lives in response to what's going on around us. And what we know about the early Christians is that, for example, in a time of a great plague in uh, the second uh, century, towards the end of the second century, Christians were encouraged to stay in the cities to help the sick rather than to flee to the country where they would hopefully avoid the plague. And they did this out of love for their neighbor. People noticed that and said, how come those people are behaving differently than everyone else? How come they're helping others and there doesn't seem to be anything in it for them? In fact, some of them might very well have cotton, uh, caught the disease and gotten sick themselves because they stayed to help. It wasn't their rational arguments that won people over to the Christian faith. It was living their lives in such a way that people could see the life of Christ in them. Thus, it's a new opportunity, always, every day. It's a new opportunity so then let's move to uh, Psalm 98 and uh, a new song. We can go to the next slide here. Thanks, Marie. So Jesus is talking to his disciples, and, uh, and he's, uh, you know, they're, they're looking at the temple. Um, in other words, they're taking their eyes off Jesus. Huh? They're looking at the temple and saying, look at this wonderful stuff, forgetting that the one who built this rebuilt this temple, right, was a despicable person. Herod the Great was a terrible person. But they kind of ignore that, and they just go, isn't this wonderful? Isn't this awesome? And Jesus has to remind them that they shouldn't be looking at that. They should be looking at him, because it is through him that God will do marvelous things. 
right? Not through the temple, but through him. And so now we have something that resonates with Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song because God has done wonderful things. Now, I want to make a comment about new songs here for a minute. The idea of new songs here is not just that it's something new, so it has to be stylistically, you know, up to date or anything like that. Like, it's not new for the sake of being new. The reason why the psalmist says sing a new song is because God has done a new thing. So you need a new song in response to the new thing that God has done. The first full song that we have recorded in the Bible is the song of Miriam, sung after God has delivered his people from slavery through the Red Sea, and they're on the other side in safety, and now Miriam sings a new song. In the same way, when we recognize the ways that God has been working in our lives and in the the world around us, when we see the new things that God is doing, then that requires a new song. In other words, every generation has a song of praise to sing because God is always active in this world. Even when there's wars and rumors of wars, even when there's frightening signs in the sky, even when there's pandemics, even when there's political turmoil, like all these things, God is still active. This is the message that you and I have to share. We may not be brought before courts. We may not be brought before a group to have to answer to our faith. But if we live our faith in such a way that people can see that we are not basing our lives on fear, but rather on hope, And that we can respond to people around us not based on fear of losing something or or being taken advantage of, but rather because we are showing Christ's love to them. We are testifying to our faith. And I think this is the challenge of the 21st century. No one else is going to tell the story. It has to be us. We have to say... This is what I believe. But not so much, this is what I think about God, but this is what gives my life meaning. The love of God, which has been shown to me through Jesus Christ, has transformed me into a person who can love and care, who can be filled with hope rather than worry about the future, someone who can focus on doing the right thing, Did you catch that at the end of the passage from Thessalonians? This is what Paul writes. Brothers and sisters, don't get discouraged in doing what is right. Don't get discouraged in doing what is right. It may not seem at that moment like it's making a big difference, but God sees the big picture. And what history tells us is that when Christians do the right thing, and live their lives according to the commandments of Jesus, the example of Jesus, and filled with the spirit of Jesus, then the world is transformed. We have benefited from that. I mean, what we call Western civilization has benefited from this sense of the need to care for one another, to to love one another, to accept one another, um, and that's what allowed you know, democracy to develop in, uh, as we have it now. That's what's uh, allowed uh, uh, health care to develop in the way that it has. That's what's allowed uh, public education to develop in the way that it has. These are all principles that have been based on uh, the basic Christian principles of loving our neighbor. The world has been transformed because we have had Jesus in our midst, working in and through us all through the centuries. If we think this is a tumultuous time, I can, as a student of history, tell you, I don't think there's any era that wasn't a tumultuous time. 
what was the source of the tumult was maybe different in different eras, but there was always tumult. That seems to be just part of our human history. But what also is part of our human history, if you have the eyes of faith to see it, is God's activity. And if you can see God's activity in the world, and trust me, this week I saw examples of this, and I thought, isn't this amazing? What people are doing in the name of Christ. This is wonderful. You have to have eyes of faith to see it. But when you see it, you will want to sing a new song. You will want to rejoice out loud. You will want to sing your praises along with all of creation. The line from the psalm, let the sea and everything in it roar and the world and all its inhabitants too. You have to remember that for the ancient Israelites, the sea was the source of chaos and uh, it was the source of fear. They were not a sea-going people. They liked to stay on the land because the sea seemed to be too chaotic for them. The depths were a thing to fear. And yet, God is even in charge of the depths. And so, even the sea and everything in it can roar its praise to God. The psalmist ends by this picture of a future where God's will is done. God will establish justice in the world rightly. God will establish justice among all people fairly. We can be glad and sing a new song even in the midst of circumstances that are confusing, frightening, and worrisome. We can sing a new song because we have this promise that God is with us and God will remain with us throughout whatever comes our way. And that in the end, God is working for this kingdom where love will be its basis in every aspect. This is our hope. This is why we sing a new song. Amen. We're going to sing a new song. Actually, I think we've done, we've done this before. Oh, sing to the Lord. It's a number 822. I'll invite you to stand and uh, we'll sing together. Oh, sing to the Lord, oh, sing God a new song, oh, sing to the Lord. Oh, sing God a new song, oh, sing to the Lord. Oh, sing God a new song, oh, sing to our God, oh, sing to our God. The God is the Lord, and God has done wonders, for God is the Lord. And God has done wonders, for God is the Lord. And God has done wonders, oh, sing to our God, oh, sing to our God. So dance to our God, and blow all the trumpets, so dance to our God. And blow all the trumpets, so dance to our God. And blow all the trumpets, oh, sing to our God, oh, sing to our God. Oh, shout to our God, who gave us the Spirit, oh, shout to our God. Who gave us the Spirit, oh, shout to our God. Who gave us the Spirit, oh, sing to our God, oh, sing to our God. Jesus is Lord. Amen, alleluia, for Jesus is Lord. Amen, alleluia, for Jesus is Lord. Amen, alleluia, oh sing to our God, oh sing to our God. Last verse, one more time. 
For Jesus is Lord. Amen. Alleluia. For Jesus is Lord. Amen. Alleluia. For Jesus is Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Oh, sing to our God. Oh, sing to our God. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. A couple of uh, weekends ago, we held a retreat here called uh, Recovering Our Baptismal Identity. And this was uh, part of my uh, studies for the Doctor of Worship uh, program. And uh, we had 11 participants. And as part of the retreat, they all made a little uh, baptismal identity bowl. And uh, they, so they, 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 they didn't know they were doing this when they came. Uh, they just were kind of, it was sprung upon them. And uh, here's a picture. You can see they're crafting their bowls. And, uh, and then uh, there's a certain ritual to go with it. Um, and that's uh, what the intention is. So every day, the idea is, is that they have a little water in the bowl. And they turn, first of all, to the, to, the, um, to the west and renounce the forces of darkness. And then they turn to the east and, and acclaim Christ as Lord. And then they mark themselves with a cross uh, wet from the bowl on their forehead saying Christ be in my thinking and then on their mouth Christ be in my speaking and then on their hearts Christ be in my heart today. It's a way of starting the day uh, so that we align ourselves with uh, our identity as belonging to Christ. And uh, so uh, I wanted first of all to uh, wait until a Sunday morning to share this with you because it was kind of a neat experience and those who participated in the retreat uh, said it was meaningful and uh, wanted to let you know that I intend to run more of these retreats in the future because I think uh, it's valuable uh, for folks. So I'm going to call those who were at the baptismal, uh, recovering our baptismal identity retreat to come up and to find their bowl <laughs> so they can take it with them. So uh, come on up. I know that I, we've got a bunch of them who are here today. What amazed me as they were making the bowls is how they all were unique. They all had a unique aspect to them. Can you figure out? Now, yeah, you've got your, you've got your initials on the bottom, so that can help. How's it coming? Are you finding them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Process of elimination is eventually we'll get there. So after the, uh, the um, bowls were, were made by the participants, then, uh, can you get that there? Then um, we had Kara Driscoll do the firing of the uh, bowls so, and the glazing. So that's why they look so nice and finished. And Kara Driscoll um, also uh, was responsible for making the uh, ceramic uh, items that are in the uh, home communion kits. Uh, this uh, Kara is a spiritual director, and Pastor Lynn has been uh, visiting with Kara for many years now. So we thank Kara for her uh, adding to this. So may you enjoy uh, the bowls, and I uh, have. I have that ritual card with me, but it's in my office, so I'll get it to you after the service. But thank you for participating, and uh, may 
your baptismal identity be renewed daily in a way that's meaningful to you. Thank you. You can be seated. I chose to uh, do this at this point in the service because I just wanted to point out one other thing, and that is the Apostles' Creed, which we use quite often on Sunday mornings, developed in connection with baptism. And that, there, uh, that, that the three sections of the creed um, are in response to three questions that were asked at baptism in the uh, third and fourth centuries. And that became eventually what we know as the Apostles' Creed. So it was a way of uh, three times affirming your uh, faith in Christ. Now we're going to turn uh, to uh, our prayers of intercession. At the end of each petition, there will be the uh, phrase, Lord, in your mercy, and the response, uh, hear our prayer. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. Just go ahead there. Uh, one more, thanks. Yeah. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Bountiful God, we lift our voices to rejoice and sing of your praises. Hear our prayer for all who testify to your name in the face of persecution and threats of violence. Keep your church from alarm that sends it astray. Lord, in your mercy. Bountiful God, forgive the sins that set nation against nation, brothers and sisters against their family, and displace people to famine and disease. With righteousness and equity, bring your peace to reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bountiful God, you bless us with gifts of music. Teach us to sing a new song of salvation and hope in your Son. May the river of your life flow to refresh the land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bountiful God, your compassion touches all who suffer from disease and natural disasters. Hear our prayer for all whom we carry in our hearts into your presence. Son of righteousness, bring your healing touch to all who call upon your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died, especially we remember today the friends and family of Ivy Zur. Comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. There is no place to turn, O God, for the comfort we desire. No place but to you alone, O Lord. Bless us this day that we might be a blessing to others. Bless us this day that we might be faithful witnesses to life in Christ Jesus, our Redeemer and Lord. In our songs and prayers, in our scriptures and spoken words, reveal your purposes to us through the power of your Holy Spirit. We are here, O Lord. Equip us for ministry with the faith and assurance that only you can provide. Amen. Today in the uh, Eucharistic prayer, we're going to sing uh, the Sanctus and something called the Mystery of Faith. And these are new to us. This is uh, These were written by my friend Jeff Johnson. And uh, I would like to just... Uh, run through them once each with you before we actually get to the great Thanksgiving. So, Marie, can you move to the slide that says Sanctus? There we go. And then Joshua, can we just go through this once, please? up. 
is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And you may have noticed that we have Beth Callum uh, playing trumpet along on the hymns today. So she'll play the melody for that. That'll help you. The mystery of faith is uh, just uh, three little uh, lines, and uh, we'll sing through that. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And we'll repeat that. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So, using those new songs, we will continue with the great thanksgiving. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. I'll invite you to stand. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom, and let the church say amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered together in one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. of God for the people of God come for all is prepared for those of you who are communing online I invite you to take your bread this is the body of Christ given for you and then if you take your cup this is the blood of Christ shed for you Please be seated. The Sunday school children will commune first, followed by the remainder of the congregation. There is a hymn to be sung during communion. The words will be on the screen.
and now may the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of life and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we also offer a sending of communion prayer for our home communion ministers as they take our home communion kits. Gracious God, you took the form of a servant, offering yourself as food, comfort, and strength to a hurting world. Anoint with a servant heart those who take your word and sacrament to our church family who are homebound. Grant grace, mercy, healing, and hope to those who will receive this sacrament and receive your words of new life. Amen. I've been uh, thinking lately about the best gesture for doing a blessing when I can only use one hand. Um, when you can use both hands, right, this, this can be, but this could be misinterpreted. <laughs> so I'm going to use a sort of a more orthodox uh, posture of the hand where it's like this, which is to remind you of the Trinity because there's three parts to going on here. Um, so in case you're wondering why I'm doing this. May the strength of God be with you. May you never tire of the work God calls you to do for the benefit of God's kingdom. Go forth with the power of the Holy Spirit. Go to share the good news of the gospel with everyone you meet. For Christ is alive, alive in you. Amen. Love and serve the Lord. Thank you. 